Hello guys, in this video we'll look at how to filter results when using get request that returns a list. In our API project there will be get v1 travels and get v1 tours endpoints. Although setup for filtering is similar to sorting, the implementation is a bit more complex. First, we're going to use filter by parameter that will look something like filter by equals name cool tour and price 10 to 30. This is a like query language, LQL, which is heavily inspired by Lucene. Next, we need to convert like expression into abstract syntax tree, or AST. Like npm package will do that for us. Finally, we create a SQLize where clause object from the AST. Although our implementation of AST to where clause object translator won't be complete, it will give you a good starting point so you can customize it and add to it to feature project. While implementing filtering, we have to keep in mind the following safety and performance concerns. Number one, since we're using user input, there is a chance of SQL injections. Because we are converting the AST to SQLize clause object, SQLize will sanitize user input for us. If you are planning to convert AST to plain SQL, please use SQL Builder that will allow you to compose SQL fragments safely by using tagged template literals. Number two, our search interface can be used as a vector of DDoS attacks. Someone intentionally or accidentally can put something like this, name A or name B or name C or name D, etc. Such query will be computationally expensive. Since we have AST of the query, we can calculate complexity of the query and set up an upper limit. In our case, we'll implement it by calculating how many levels deep AST object is and set an upper limit of five. Number three, someone can run queries against the database fields that are not optimized for filtering. For example, description field. This will be also computationally expensive. We will prevent that by using allowed filter by fields array that will include only fields we want the user to run filtering against. Now, with the theory out of the way, let's get started. First, let's add npm like package. As usual, let's first add filter by to open API document. So here in B1 travels, we're going to add inquery parameter, name filter by, it will be string, required false, and description will be filter by query parameter, and we'll give an example. So the same way we did it with a sort by parameter in the sort by tutorial. So now let's go scroll down to v1 tours, and then the v1 tours, we also will add inquery, filter by, uh, type of string, and required false. Next, let's go ahead and update list tours and list travels methods in the controller. So we'll go into SRC routes, uh, travels, controllers, and here next to sort by, we're gonna add filter by, and we're gonna take request query filter underscore by property. And in the same way, let's go to tours, controllers, and right here, again, next to sort by, we'll add filter by rec.query.filter by. Next, let's go to repository, base repository, and update the code to be able to handle filter by property we just added. We add another protected property, allowed filter by field, and it will be type of array, and we're going to assign it an empty array. Now let's go to travel and tour repositories and override allowed filter by fields property. So in the travel repository, we will allow filter by fields as name and number of days. And in the tour repository, we will allow to filter by name, price, starting date, and ending date. Now let's head back to base repository. We're gonna update get all method to handle filter by option. Here we'll do a check if options have filter by. We will call get filter by on base repository and we'll pass options filter by. Then we're going to delete filter by property from options object 
and we add where property to options object and we will assign it the value returned from the get filter by method where property is used by sqlize to query data now let's create get filter by method in the base repository so all the way down we have a protected method get filter by it receives filter by string and returns an object the method attempts to call get sqlize where clause function well, which we write out later as a first argument it passes filter by string parsed by parse method from like library the second argument to get sqlize where clause function is allowed filter by fields if the call is successful result of the function is returned if there is an error it is handled by the catch statement and gets rethrown as an api error with name of filter by error and code error ftb the error handler will catch it and return it back to the api user as a error response finally let's create get sqlize where clause function in utils folder there's a lot of stuff going on so let's break it down we're going to import op from sqlize type like query from like library and depth of object from functions the depth of object function will calculate how deep uh, the ast object is so let's take a quick look at it so basically what it does it checks the properties of the object and if the property is an object it increments level by one and then in the end it returns the level so it has a recursion going on now let's jump back to get sqlize where clause function next we will define max search query depth to be five this will limit filter by query to three expressions connected by two ands or ors or combination of them for example price less than 30 and starting date greater than 1st of november 2023 and ending date is less than the 30th of november 2023 we will also define operators map object that will map AST operators to sqlize op operators. Now let's take a look at a get sqlize uh, where clause function itself. First, it checks if the depth of the AST object doesn't exceed uh, max depth query. If it does and error is thrown, filter by has too many expressions next we define two functions translate tag expression and translate expression and finally we call translate expression function and pass it search query ast object and then we return the result of that now let's take a look at a translate tag expression function it gets passed an ast object as a parameter it checks if ast ta type is tag if not, an error is thrown, it destructs field, expression, and operator from the AST object. It checks if field type is implicit field. If so, an error is thrown. For our purposes, we don't want to support implicit fields. If it makes sense for your application to have an implicit field, you can assign whatever field from the database you want if the field is not specified in filter by expression next we check if field name is included in allowed filter by fields for safety reasons mentioned before we don't want to let users filter through any field they want if the field name is not in the allowed filter by array we throw an error next we check if expression type is range expression if so we return sqlize where clause object that runs between query on expression range mean and expression range max after that we're almost done with the logic the only thing is left is to check if ast expression is a literal expression and if operators map object has operator operator as a key if both conditions are satisfied the function returns sqlize where a class object that runs a query on the specified field name with the operator and the expression value now let's take a look at the translate expression function it's a little shorter than translate tag expression 
it also gets uh, AST object. And if the type of that AST object is tag, we're going to return translate tag expression function. If the AST type is logical expression first, we check if the operator's map has that logical operator. If not, we throw an error. Logical operator is not supported. If the check is successful, the function returns sequelize where clause object with a mapped operator and calls itself on the right and the left sides of the expression. If AST type is not a tag or logical expression, an error is thrown. Other AST types you can implement are unary operator, not expression, and parenthesized expression. Please see an article by Gaius Cousinus, the creator of like, in the description of the video. And we are finally done. As I mentioned before, get sequelize where a clause function doesn't cover every use case, but should give you a good idea of how to parse an IST object so you can customize it to fit your project. Now let's try out the filtering. And I already seeded the database. To learn how to create a seeder, please watch my video, Sequelize Seeders. Now let's go to Tor's endpoint. So I'm going to open it up. Let's click try out. First, we're going to put price between 10 to 30. And then we're going to click execute and we put them in the square brackets. And now we got tours that have price between 10 and $30. And as you can see, they're not sorted. So let's go ahead and sort those prices or those tours in the ascending order by price because we did sorting in the previous video. So let's go ahead and do price ascending. Let's go ahead and click execute again. And now we get the results from the lowest price between 10 and 30 to the highest price. Now let's put another filter by condition. So we'll put and starting date greater than uh, the 1st of November, 2023. And here again, we need to put it in quotes. So we'll put 2023 as 11, 0, 1. And let's execute. And again, we got the results. They are in ascending order from lowest to highest. And as you can see, all the starting dates are November 2nd and higher. Filter by paired with sorting allows us to run pretty complex queries on our API. Finally, let's go ahead and simulate a complex query. So we're going to go ahead and put right here uh, lots of properties connected by and name, description, and price, etc. So let's go ahead and click execute. And as a result, we got an error that filter by has too many expressions. So our API behaves as expected. And this is how you can implement a fairly advanced filtering using Lucene-like syntax. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.